Hey guys, Kilo Kilo 4, Mike November Delta, David from Clearwater, Florida, normally, but uh, operating out of uh, Hinesville, Georgia, Echo Mike 91. Anyway, uh, it's been a while. I've been uh, on a couple deployments, um, haven't posted much about ham radio. Um, figured I, um, kind of between the lockdown and me being up here for a neck injury, just getting recovered and hopefully back into, uh, get back into things. Uh, I've uh, been dabbling with uh, uh, AMSAT, tracking the uh, CubeSats, AO91, AO92, International Space Station, doing APRS packets and such. Uh, but I figured I'd show you a couple radios I'm using, uh, full duplex uh, options out there, um, some older ones if you can find them. Uh, if not, um, there's a couple of new options out there uh, that I, I talk about. Um, but uh, that's about it. Um, here goes. All right, we have uh, our full duplex HTs uh, here, uh, starting with the far left, a vintage. Um, I call it Vintage FT470 uh, by Yezu. Uh, one of the first full duplex uh, radios, I believe, um, between Yezu and uh, ICOM came out with a full duplex uh, radio. Um, and uh, that's a beautiful radio. I love that little FT470. Um, it's so easy to program and use. Um, as well as its uh, big brother, the improved um, FT530. Um, both of these are kind of hard to come by. Um, you find this 470 for about 100 and change, um, the FT530 about 200 or so. Um, they're both really easy to use and program. Um, some of the menus are a little, little tricky, but uh, uh, once you figure it out, it's too easy. Uh, there's a really good, like, five or six part video on the FT470. Uh, by uh, I'll keep put a description, a link in the description to um, his videos. Uh, the five, FT530, I haven't seen one around, but I think I might make one similar to what uh, the other gentleman did. Um, and uh, this guy, the 470, has. Um, uh, one volume knob and uh, one squelch, one volume and uh, a balance knob to adjust from um, channel one or channel two, uh, VFOA or VFOB. Uh, with the FT530, there's two separate volumes, two separate squelches, um, and then you hit the band button to switch between VFOA um, and B. Um, both have independent headphone jacks mic jacks makes it really easy to record your audio and I'll show you the hardware I got for that um, the ICW32A by ICOM awesome little radio as well um, I tried to get uh, the older ICOM similar to uh, the same generations of, the, of these guys but uh, it was hard uh, there was one in um, Japan or, or actually one in China uh, but I couldn't get it here because of customs and I wasn't sure if it was unlocked. Some of these require um, unlocking to work the satellite bands. Um, these are, uh, that one's been unlocked, but I don't think you even need uh, that Mars unlock. And this one is as well. And obviously everybody knows the Kenwood D72 by now. Um, won't have to go into too much detail about that. Now this boxing, uh, or however you pronounce it, um, I think it's the 888. I picked that up um, probably eight, nine years ago when it first came out. Um, you can't find it anymore. It's a full duplex. Uh, it's got a cross band repeater built into it. It's pretty interesting for uh, how much, I think I paid maybe 80 bucks for it or, or less, 60, I'm not sure. Uh, but it was uh, pretty cool. I think they finally figured out, hey, it doesn't have the right uh, proper tones to um, legally do cross band repeater and I'm not sure if it's part certified or whatnot but I just threw it up there so you have a comparison of um, size and you know and the different uh, options that were available I was trying to find uh, a similar uh, like the DJ uh, I think it's a G DJ G7 or whatnot um, uh, a Bialenko uh, I'd like to get one of those and try that, but everybody keeps telling me it's um, it's full of duplex, but it gets desensed. Um, which, if that happens, um, I have a little bandpass filter here. 
um, for the, it kind of blocks the uh, UHF. Um, so if you're transmitting on UHF um, or, or VHF, it'll keep it just broadcasting VHS and it shouldn't interfere with the UHF downlink. Hopefully I didn't just mess that whole thing up right now. But uh, it's rated for uh, from DC to 190 megahertz. Um, so it's a low pass filter. And um, it seems to help, but I haven't worked SO50 in a little while. I've been working on AO91 and AO92, uh, tried and true. Really good, easy to operate. Um, uh, I don't see to even have to uh, adjust for Doppler um, if I get it uh, in time. Anyway, so brings us to our cables. Um, if you want to, you're gonna have to. Um, you're either gonna have to use a headphone. You can use a headphone. Uh, I recommend a regular headphone. This is a TTRS uh, with the microphone built in, um, but I got it to work for me. Um, a normal headphone would probably be better. Um, so you can plug that right, right into the radio. Uh, you're gonna have to so that your the, the downlink doesn't um, get recorded or sent back up on, you know, cause a bunch of interference uh, on the uplink. So uh, I have, when, when I'm recording, I use this splitter. It's a regular um, headphone jack to splitter. And then my headphone goes into one side. And then I have another little extender. Uh, this plugs here. And this guy is an adapter to go from uh, TTRS to four pin to three pin. So uh, if I work my way from the radio, I go this direction um, and to my iPhone, uh, either iPhone, if you have an Android, you'll just use this guy, I guess. Um, I'm not sure what Android's using these days, but I'm primarily iOS, uh, but a lightning connector to headphone jack, TTRS, it's TRS gets converted to a standard audio jack. Go from here, this output, and I can record. Now I did find I have to finagle this and kind of pull it halfway out uh, to get left and right. Uh, I don't know if that's part of the TTRS or, or this guy uh, kind of affecting um, the connection here. So I'm gonna swap this out later and try it again. Uh, so that doesn't have, unless I have a bad splitter. Uh, going to the antenna, it's just an arrow two, uh, as you saw earlier, and uh, uh, it's the one with the duplexer built into the handle. Uh, if I'm going to use my 857 or 817, uh, I'll just disconnect from here and run a straight BNC connector to the radio. I almost forgot to mention, on both of these Yezus, the 470 and the 530, I'm running the 12 volt battery, uh, which allows me to get the full uh, output uh, five watts out of these radios, um, which uh, probably don't need with this uh, arrow too, but uh, I know it uh, helps out quite a bit uh, compared to, you know, there's a bunch of guys running, um, you know, 20 or 40 watts in their mobile uh, dual band radios, so they'll overpower me all day, but um, if everybody's being polite and taking turns and it works out pretty well. So, just so you know how I have this set up, um, uh, I, pretty simple. Um, I will I'll go to memory. Um, actually, I'm in memory mode already on this one. Um, what I do is I set channel one for uh, AO91, and then I'll switch over, and that's, um, that's the transmit. So, I know this is my transmit memory one transmit because I have the uh, tone on there for the uplink. Uh, so swap back and forth. And then I'll go to channel two and then hit band, channel two on the second VFO. And now I have my receive um, and then I'll switch back and keep uh, the left one for transmit. Um, and again, that's my tone. This is for AO92 and that's for SO50. So what I do is just ch channel one is A191, channel two is A192, SO50 is channel five, and then I have uh, A101. Um, it's not A101, it's, anyway, it's uh, is channel 10. Um, and, and uh, 
Now I haven't tried to work SO50 in a while. I've just been having too much fun with AO91 and then 92. Um, uh, but I know there was some desensing, uh, you know, transmitting on VHF receiving. Uh, I don't believe these radios have that problem. Uh, maybe some of the newer um, radios do, but uh, the circuits on these are really good. So same with this guy. Um, so I change to memory two. Uh, the arrow tells me I'm on VFOB, hit band. And go to channel memory two, that's AO92. So I'll listen here and switch back arrow over here to transmit. And then same with SO50. Um, now, again, I haven't tried SO50 in a while, but I'm sure I'd have to set up uh, multiple uh, memories uh, to adjust for the Doppler on uh, SO50. But that's one of the reasons I like AO91 and 92. That's a pretty Pretty easy. I can focus on just uh, the antenna and listening, I'm trying to remember call signs and talk. All right, for satellite tracking, I'm still using uh, ProSat, HamSat, uh, but it's now called Satellite Tracker. You can still type in the either or name and uh, it should uh, bring you up to this app called Satellite Tracker. Um, it um, uh, Craig is pretty awesome. Uh, Craig uh, Voss works, I believe. Um, and um, he has been working on this for almost 10 years. Um, uh, he keeps updating it. Um, and not as much as everybody would like, but um, uh, this is a part-time uh, part job. And uh, uh, I believe he's worked at NASA before. Um, very knowledgeable gentleman. And uh, he's got a beta feature in here for... Uh, portable satellite uh, elevation rotor control um, functionality via HTTP using uh, Arduino. Arduino, So um, that's pretty cool. I'm hoping I get uh, one built in for myself uh, and run some uh, dual, uh, dual arrow twos. But in the meantime, uh, we, I'll just give you a little overview of the app. Um, you go to manage sets, go to add a set, um, search for a specific one. Um, you could uh, type in uh, AO91, um, find it, click on it, and you'll have to type in the upload and download freq frequency um, and then hit done. But after that, it's uh, it'll be in there um, and everything else is done for you, the uh, Doppler corrections. Um, once you go to manage sets, you can either go to the map view and find the satellite, double click it, and it'll tell you um, the current time, uh, the, the time uh, to uh, pass it over, um, and it'll Doppler correct for you. Not that you necessarily need it for AO 91, 92, but uh, it uh, could help some others out there. Um, also, uh, what I like to do is I'll go to WhatsApp, I'll hit the user selected satellites, hit go, and it'll tell me um, the next pass uh, passes for several satellites. Um, I have it set to minimum elevation of eight. Um, if you go to details, preferences, um, you can select, I'm sorry, uh, set viewing information, and you can set it. Uh, the satellite degrees, uh, so I have it set to eight. Um, and preferences, you can select the next eight hours. What's up, calculation? Um, you go to set details and just directly, you know, see which set. Set it going to the map view. Um, and the set rise and set will tell you all the rise and passes for that particular satellite. Sunrise, moonrise, and that's about it. Uh, and go show you uh, operation now.
All right, guys, there you have it. Um, hopefully this helps somebody out, um, helped you uh, track down a used uh, vintage radio on, the, on a budget um, or antenna or, you know, cables to set up. Uh, if you have any questions about a specific radio, um, how to program them, set them up, uh, you know, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, please subscribe. I'm going to try this whole thing out with the uh, uh, subscription thing, you know. Um, I appreciate it if you got this far and watched the whole thing. Uh, I know volume's kind of up and down a little bit. Uh, work on um, uh, the audio levels and you know tweaking the video uh, going forward. Um, uh, but uh, 73, and I hope to catch you on there. KK4MND, clear.